Ladies and gentlemen, we begin today's Kerbal Space Program video with some terrible, grave news. Chief Engineer Durbro Kerman of the Laun Aerospace Ferris Space Station has fallen ill with the space pox. We need to get to the space station quickly in order to bring him back to Kerbin for treatment. However, there is another problem. Right now, on this very specific day only, there is a great shortage of rocket fuel. We haven't got any SSTOs ready for flight either because of reasons, which means that we're going to have to come up with a way of launching a rocket in such a way that we can save some Delta V in order to compensate for the shortage of fuel available. However, small real-life aerospace firm Spin Launch has a solution that we can use. They're developing a kinetic energy space launch system that involves bolting a rocket to a centrifuge before spinning it up to 5,000 miles an hour and then hurling it skyward into space, saving a huge amount of rocket fuel. Now, their concept involves spinning the centrifuge in a vacuum chamber, but since we can't do that in stock KSP, we'll have to make do with spinning our rocket in thick air. And here is the rocket, all ready to go. We have that ballast ore tank there on the other side of the rocket. That weighs about the same amount as the rocket itself, so that the actual whole centrifuge system is balanced and doesn't start wobbling itself to pieces upon release. And now we can just begin revolving that motor and get our rocket up to speed. We do have a fuel tank built into the centrifuge itself, so we can use our rocket's engine to get ourselves moving a bit quicker without draining any of the fuel on the rocket tanks themselves. And then we can start thinking about releasing our vehicle. You may be wondering why I've got two Kerbals on board this vessel, given that the rocket itself only has one seat, and that's because there is a risk during the spin-up process that Bill Kerman will reach his G-limit and fall unconscious. And then when he falls unconscious, we've got no way of stopping the centrifuge. But by having either a probe core, or what I think is more fun, hence why I've gone with this solution, uh, by having another Kerbal on the non-spinning part of the centrifuge, we'll still have control of the mechanism and can bring it to an emergency shutdown. But we didn't need to do that in this case, it was all good. We can start, it looks like we're starting to get up to a nice high speed. The whole structure is starting to wobble about a bit. So here we go. We're going to release. Three, two, one, go. Oh, it's spinning just quickly. Just This is fine, guys. Deploy the engine. Look at that. What was that? 36 meters per second in the end. 36 meters per second of Delta V saved. I think you guys can all agree that this was worth it. Think about how many funds. That, that's at least two funds right there. You could probably... I mean, that's like Bradley Wistons' space agency's entire monthly budget for Delta V. So really, there's a huge saving there. And now that we're off the ground, we can just continue powering forward thanks to that very, very powerful Vector engine. The Vector engine is really, really overkill for this rocket, but I picked it because it has a very high gimbal range to counteract the... Uh, the spin upon launch, although as you probably saw, it didn't really make a great deal of difference. But hey, makes maneuvers very, very quick. You do have to be careful, actually, that uh, once you've reached space, to continue using the vector engine, you've got to crank that thrust limiter right down, just because, uh, and I learned this the hard way, throttling up to full throttle with the vector engine, you know, unrestricted, will cause your Kerbal to black out. Now, this won't apply to every Kerbal. I'm sure Jebediah and Valentina could tolerate the G-forces, but Bill coming here certainly can't. And I'm using Bill for this particular mission because Derbro Kerman, the Kerbal that we're going to the aid of, uh, is the chief engineer of the space station. So we need a pretty well qualified engineer to take his place temporarily. And Bill Kerman, you know, being the chief engineer of Laun Aerospace as a whole, seems like a good replacement for the time being. He can also ensure that Derbro Kerman's contraction of space pox didn't come from any of the engineering systems using his superior skills in analysing engines and ears. That's what engineers do, right? I have no idea. I'm not a rocket scientist. Anyway, here we are. Uh, I just, just there, you might have missed it, but I lowered the thrust limiter of the Rector engine so we can perform our circularization. It was this point in take one of this mission uh, where Bill blacked out, so I had to redo it. I did actually do quite a few attempts of the launch. Obviously, the launch didn't really go quite so well because we did do a 360 spin upon deployment. However, I don't know how to avoid that for a craft of this size. I know it can be done with like a really, really small craft that's very, very light, uh, but big heavy craft like this, 
I tried many times to, to, to launch it without getting that 360 degree spin upon deployment and I just couldn't get it to work. So maybe that's a challenge for you, the viewer. The uh, craft file is in the description of the video if you want to download it and try it out for yourself. I'd love to see people attempt to launch this thing without having that 360 degree spin. I, for one, couldn't get it to work, but you might have more success than I. Uh, or you could make modifications to the rocket, such as, I don't know, putting bigger tail fins on it. Although at a certain point, We've not got much Delta V left, and as I said in that very legitimate intro, we have a, a sudden shortage of fuel for plot reasons at Laun Aerospace today. So that was that was another mitigating factor, really, for the uh, the design of the rocket. Not that the rocket is a particularly efficient design. I mean, first of all, let's be real, this whole thing is, is dumb. <laughs> it's like, spin launch doesn't really work in Kerbal Space Program. The actual uh, real spin launch, if it ever materialises, as I mentioned earlier, will be launching in a vacuum chamber. Well, it won't be launching in the vacuum chamber, but it'll be spinning up in a vacuum chamber where there is effectively no air resistance to slow it down. Down. And of course, the rocket itself will be unmanned, obviously, because it would kill any human on board. The insane G-force it'll be subjected to. Really, this I did. I did this mission for fun. I, I, I was reading about spin launch ages ago, and it suddenly popped into my head today because I was trying to think of what to do for today's Kerbal Space Program video. I had another plan for today's Kerbal Space Program video, and I spent most of today trying to do this plan and I just couldn't get it to work. In fact, I had two plans. The first thing I tried to do was a base inside the Mo Hole, just because that was one of the most requested destinations for my very recent Universal Base video. I should probably clarify a bit more on that. I did a video called the Universal Base that can supposedly land on any planetary body, and I said to the people on Twitter, where should I land it? And the second uh, most popular vote after Tylo was Moho. So I said, I'll do a Moho base, guys. And a lot of people commented saying, oh, can we do a base inside the Mohole again? So that's what I tried to do. But Mohole bases, they're so glitchy. Uh, they're so prone to Kraken attacks. They're really just... They're really just no fun. I couldn't really come up with a design that I was happy with, really. I did do a Mohole base back in 2017, I think. My goodness, time flies. Uh, and, and it just did... It worked in the video, but practically speaking, you can't... I can never, ever go back to that base, because as soon as I load it, the physics easing and all that, it'll just explode. I can't go within physics range of that base anymore, because it'll just explode. It, it, it's a fun thing to do in a video, but practically speaking, it's not really feasible. So then I thought, well, let's do a, a twist on the old surface base formula that I normally do. Either I assemble surface bases in orbit and then land it, or just launch the entire surface base as one giant monolithic structure. But I thought, you know what, with the you know breaking ground pieces, what about having a base that unfolds? So it's all compact upon launch. It doesn't have a ridiculously wide fairing. And then when you're ready to land it, it can you can just press an action group and a cal controller will unfold all the modules and it'll expand be really really cool but it was just so prone to kraken attacks it kept shaking itself apart it didn't really work and then i was left uh, saying oh bother what should i do and then i don't know why but suddenly i was reminded somehow by the of, of the spin launch system i thought you know what Let's do a spin launch. I mean, no, I didn't do that. I then realized that Laun Aerospace has a sudden shortage of fuel and I needed to save some fuel and so I did spin launch. Okay, okay, we don't have to pretend that this is the actual legitimate reason. Anyone who believed that probably statistically has clicked off if my YouTube analytical data is anything to go by. So we're probably in the clear by now. And as you can see, Matt Lowne has done it once again. He has talked over all of the critical points happening in the video. Uh, yes, we finally got Derbro Kerman back on board the spacecraft and we can get him uh, away from the space station. What else did I do? Oh yes, I installed a magnetometer boom on the space station because hey, I was bringing a Kerbal engineer to the space station. Why not add something using the new some reassembly acquired uh, EVA construction mode. I still don't have any idea what it's actually called, that mode. I probably should by this point. Uh, but yes, you know, Derbro Kerman, he loved magnetometer booms. They were his, like, favourite thing. But our, you know, our space station doesn't have one, because I built it in a time where the magneto boom experiment didn't exist. So it didn't have any. So I thought, you know, we're rescuing Derbro Kerman. He, he might not make it, you know. Space pox is a very, very serious condition. Let's add the uh, let's 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 make let's make a magnetometer boom in his honor. So that was the uh, 
the Durbro Kerman Magnetometer Boom. That is named. It's named for Durbro. Uh, he he's gonna be fine. We're gonna bring him to the finest medical care. Um, I don't have any parachutes on this module. I'm afraid, Durbro. I was trying to save Delta V, so you're gonna have to parachute uh, down to the surface. And I didn't really plan this very well because now. Uh, he's over water, so we need to. Well, I thought maybe we could just point him towards the land, and uh, we can. La and, and spoiler alert, guys, he does make it to the land. Don't worry. Uh, but yeah, um, that that was. This is. I'm wrapping up the video now, and you may maybe wondering. Oh, hasn't he just hit the surface of the water? And no, guys, because actually he made it to the land, and I don't know what you're talking about. Look at that. See, there he is, landed with his parachute as as planned all along so i don't don't comment about anything it's fine uh here there he's is fine so that that was my spin launch video <laughs> and uh i feel like there was a lot more i should have talked about uh, that i wanted to say when i was doing this video i was like oh i'm gonna talk about this this and this and then i came to recording and i'm like oh duh bro Kerman. he liked magnetometer booms and um and that's it if you want to watch any more videos by me for some reason there is a link there are links both of the i made both of those videos um you can subscribe go on patreon and that's it guys thank you for watching um